Amen. Luke chapter 15. If you're able to remain standing, please do so. Amen. Luke chapter 15. Starting at verse number 1. And again, verse number 7. Very familiar. Parable. Very familiar story. Very familiar to people. Uh, but I will try today, uh, instead of allowing you to see this in the way you always seen it, Try to give new light to it. Amen. 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 Uh, try to give the revelation what I believe the Lord is trying to show us in this book. When you find us, say amen. amen. If you love yourself, still look at Luke 15. All the tax collectors and sinners, the way my Bible is were approaching to listen to him, Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes were complaining. This man welcomes sinners. And he eats with them. So Jesus tells them a parable. What a man among you who has 100 sheep and loses one of them does not leave the 99 in the open field and goes after the lost one until he finds it. Verse 5, when he has found it, joyfully puts it on his shoulders and coming home he calls his friends his neighbors together saying to them rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep all right, all right. verse 7 is where we end he says I tell you in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents then over 99 righteous, sanctified church folks who don't need repentance. I want to preach today with this subject in mind, left out. Left out. Left out. If you've been watching the news lately, there have been plenty of stories to gain and capture your attention. Many of us, maybe we are mesmerized by the story of Hillary Clinton and the email situation. She constantly finds herself in. Maybe we are enamored by the story of Donald Trump. Uh, who finds his way as the front runner of the Republican GOP party. Uh, and not only do we just like the fact that he's the first guy, but we kind of get a kick out of the stuff he says. Uh, because he's not polished. He's not one of those people who does stuff because it is uh, the right thing to do or politically correct. Uh, but Trump says what you really want to say. Trump does what you really want to do, uh, but because Trump has the money and the power, he says he can say whatever he wants to say. The news has put these stories in our face, but for the last week, there's been one story, no matter where you are, whether you are a sports fan or not, there's one story that's constantly in our face, and we get updated almost every other hour. And it is the story of Lamar Joseph Odom. You gotta understand Lamar Odom, whether you're a basketball fan or not, you know his name because the news has presented him to you. Lamar Joseph Odom in 2009 married a beautiful woman by the name of Khloe Kardashian. Many of us know the Kardashians by watching their shows, keeping up with the Kardashians. Some of us know them by Sister Kim, but other, whatever way you know them, you know who the Kardashians are. Uh, 
But Lamar marries Chloe, Chloe Kardashian in 2009, the same year he wins his first NBA championship. In 2010, he goes on to win another NBA championship with the Los Angeles Lakers. In 2011, Sister Austin, he is on top of the world and he wins the Six Man Year Award. Can't you see this man? He's now newly married. He has two championships and he's received the Six Man Award, which recognizes that he is a great player. But somewhere down the line, the Los Angeles Lakers wanted to improve their team and they tried to trade for Chris Paul, which included Lamar Odom. If you haven't followed the story, you must understand that the, the deal with Chris Paul did not fall through, which left Lamar Odom hurt. Lamar Odom's words were when he did not show up to practice in preseason, he went to show up to the owner demanding a trade, and his words exactly are, you don't want to be at a place where people don't want you. My brothers and sisters, if we be honest with ourselves, none of us like to feel rejected. None of us like to feel or to be in a place where we really don't want to be. You can be in a place, a room full of people, but still be rejected. You can be in a place of comfort. You can be in a place of sanity. You can be in a place of the church, the place of a home, a restaurant, and still not be accepted for who you are. It was Mother Teresa who once said before she died, she said the greatest poverty of all is loneliness and rejection. And my brothers and sisters, that's a good thing and a beautiful thing when you look at it because you can have money and still be broke. You can have possessions and still be broke. But what happens when you find yourself in a world full of people but you find yourself all by yourself? We don't like it. And if you're not careful, rejection can cause you to do some crazy stuff. We know what happened to Lamar Odom. Lamar Odom goes left field and he decides to become an alcoholic. He decides to become a drug addict and he decides to him and his wife decide to separate but now they're back together. But here's the story. When you are by yourself, you seek other and uh, you seek other vices and other things to make you part of a community. Please don't get it twisted. Your young boys and young girls are not joining games because it looks good. They're not joining games because getting shot sounds good. But they're lonely to look to be a part of something and somebody that will accept them. Please don't get it twisted. That yes, there are some people who are homosexuals and lesbians by their choice. But there's some people who are going through a phase because they didn't get accepted by the other genders and the other orientations that they decide to go and test and try something else out only to be accepted. And if I get on your street real quick, you've done some crazy stuff and some nasty stuff and some stuff that folks will shake their head just to be accepted, just to feel a part of something. All of us want to be a part of something. Y'all hear? We all want to be a part of somebody. We'll go and do crazy stuff to be a part of a fraternity. We'll go all our way to be a part of a sorority. Uh, I know I got some Eastern stars and the Mason here. Please let me leave here safely. But we'll join and do all types of stuff to become a part of a lodge. This text opens up. Let us know that Jesus is teaching and he starts drawing a crowd. So the answer to the crowd, he draws a not us church folk. Correct. Correct. But the text says, look at it, all the tax collectors and all the sinners were gathered around Jesus. And while they're gathered around Jesus, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes 
work from play. 